Spiritual burnout is a completely real thing and you might be experiencing it right now. Let's get into it. Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and today I wanted to cover the topic of spiritual burnout. What is it? What does it feel like? How do we come through it? And are you a bad person if you're experiencing it? <laughs> so the obvious answer to that part is no, you're not a bad person. And yes, this can happen. But let's go back to the beginning about when you start your, your spiritual practice or when you started your spiritual awakening. And that can come in stages. Or if you haven't started yet, maybe this all starts to feel overwhelming. What typically happens when someone goes in and they start their spiritual practice they feel a peace. They feel an, an openness. They start to expand. And this is what we call the spiritual high. It's sort of like, ah, oh, here's the answer. Oh, I just feel so much better. This is where we see people who just started their spiritual awakening. They're going out preaching to everybody. <laughs> like, this is the key to happiness. You do it like this, this, and this. And often it is from a place of excitement and a place of relief. And it can be really beautiful when we want to share that with others so they can have that same type of experience. Unfortunately, there are some people who are misfiring and they start to use that as a way of control and domination over others. So that's a whole other thing. But for most people who go on to that spiritual high, we're amazed, it feels very magical because now our power is being restored. This is where people start getting really excited about manifestation. Or they're working with Archangel Shamuel to find something and they find it and they're like, that was incredible. It almost, I'm an 80s kid, so it almost takes me back to when I was a kid and we had, you know, all these magical movies and because it was very that. It was very about fantasy and, and all of that. So that does something for my inner child as well. I don't know if you can relate. But then we start getting into the hard stuff. We have our soul's contract. We have high points on that soul's contract and everything that we do as, as we come into human form, now we start to invoke our human free will. So we have big lessons that we're trying to learn, but how that plays out depends on the free will choice. Okay, That's why we don't really get off path per se, but we might be on a more struggling path than we need to be. Okay, And this is something that I go through with my clients who get sessions with me. We talk about that sort of thing. So what can happen is now we are opening ourselves up, we're getting more information, you might be getting downloads, and then boom, you hit up on a density consciousness problem, issue, or you feel really relieved when you're doing your spiritual practice and then there's life, okay? Then <laughs> there's having to go to work, you know, or have that boss yell at you or you're not getting along with your spouse or what have you. And this kind of uh, dampens the spiritual high, doesn't it? Because remember, it felt like this was the cure-all. It felt like this was the solution. And now it's not always translating into density consciousness. Now we get some people out there who, again, are misfiring, miswired, whatever is going on there. And they will tell you, oh, you're not doing well enough in your spiritual practice if you still have problems in your life. Or you are messing up and not doing it correctly if you experience anger. Oh, that would be a three-hour lecture if I <laughs> went down that road. We don't listen to those people. Okay, A lot of times those are covert narcissists uh, or any kind of person who's just trying to be manipulative to drain you of your power, essentially. It's not just your energy. It is your power by getting you to doubt whether, you know, the, the most beautiful thing that a human can do, which is their connection to source, that somehow you're misfiring and you're doing it wrong, that can put you into a dark place. I really needed to put that out there because I want to make it very clear that if you start your spiritual path or even if you've been on it for a long time and then you start going through a lot of Maybe it's a dark night of the soul kind of moment. Or maybe you're going through a lot of density consciousness lessons. Yes, there could be some tweaking. Yes, there could be some information from your spiritual team to help you get through that so you don't have to struggle so much. But that's an indication that you're doing something right, not something wrong. 
And that is something a lot of people in the spiritual community will try to make you believe. Oh, you're being negative. Well, maybe you are. <laughs> but is that negativity coming from pain? Is that negativity because you're in the deconstructing mode, which happens, right? I remember there was a time where I was... Finally, the all the walls that I put up to not look at certain things that had happened in my life started to crumble. And then it was like... Every time something came out, it just, like, I would notice it, remember it, and I would blurt it out. And, of course, people that I was around at the time, they were very self-centered. You know, there was nobody to talk to, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. Not that I was treating my friends like therapists, but, you know, <laughs> they were very self-centered. It had to be about them all the time. So I think you can go through that when you are having a moment where everything does feel like it's kind of falling apart. You want to talk, you know, you want to journal, you want to get it out. That is not a bad thing. Unless you're doing that to play victim, to siphon off of other people's energy. Okay, that's a whole different thing. We have, this is why I say, getting really in tune with and understanding what your intentions are and what others' intentions are. And trusting that, not in the way of, I already, I trust my instincts and I know what I know. Don't listen to those people either. But I'm saying if you're sitting there and someone seems nice enough, but it's just something that you're feeling inside like, I don't know about this. You don't need to put any judgment on it. Just trust it and keep your distance from that person. Okay. Again, without judgment because they might be going through, might be innocent. They might be going through quite a bit themselves, but you just don't feel like you have the capacity to handle your stuff and hold space for them. Right? Especially if there's somebody who keeps swirling and they're not attempting to help themselves. Does that make sense? This is very nuanced. And I know it can sound contradictory, but it's not contradictory at all. It only seems that way because of how we have been patterned to think. Black or white thinking. If you act this way, then you are this. And that is not, that's not the case. Okay? So, as you're going through all of this, it can become very exhausting to handle the next lesson. And the next lesson. And we feel like we have to keep going or we're not doing enough as a spiritual being in these density bodies, right? Ooh, I'm getting a pink. Oh. <laughs> I just felt like a, like a newscaster who has like an earpiece. <laughs> that was that was really goofy. Anyway, um, back to us. Okay, back to what we were saying. <laughs> we'll see what that is. But that can become very exhausting. And we can start getting sick of hearing about spirituality and we're going to talk about that as well okay that, that's coming that's coming soon but it's all right to take a break it's all right to say okay I'm just going to go off and have fun for a little bit I'm going to allow myself to rejuvenate from that lesson I just came through and I would say it's an imperative part of your spiritual growth to allow whatever just occurred to fully integrate to fully land so that you don't keep repeating it, okay? Going over a lesson again and again and again for no reason. Now let's talk about spiritual burnout because of the way you were approaching your spirituality. This is gonna get spicy, okay? So buckle up. <laughs> so if you have always taken the approach to spirituality that you didn't, you weren't really in it to feel growth necessarily you just thought it was interesting there was a viewer who said uh they brought up the the distinction between spiritualism and spirituality and i thought that's it that yeah well said thank you for that uh you know because spiritualism if done correctly is powerful but it's it's more and people are i'm trying to be careful here because i don't want to be offensive people are built to do that, to explore that. Remember, we're all out here trying to experiment with duality energy. That's what we're doing here, partly, I think, what we're doing here as humans. So there are people out there who are supposed to do that. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't, it doesn't have to mean anything. But if you're somebody who's just like, oh, I'm going to go listen to this type of reading because I find it fascinating, cool, okay? Again, nothing wrong with that. Until you get to the point of, it's not really thrilling me anymore. Now I'm bored with it. 
because you really weren't connecting into anything. Or maybe the types of readings you were listening to could have been sort of like the throwaway readings. There are people who, they, they go into like the density energy and they do a reading from that standpoint. And that really is, I guess, for entertainment to get you kind of, you know, think if you've ever gone to like an amusement park. I have done this. I did this once where I went to an amusement park. And it was around Halloween. And I don't know if, I, if we should be offended. <laughs> but part of the spooky part of the Halloween thing was having a psychic reader there. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> out of curiosity, I went in and there was this beautiful woman sitting there. Gorgeous energy. She actually, uh, she very much connected to fairies and fairy energy. And she's sitting there giving me a reading. And she was drained. She was just drained because she was the parlor trick. She was the entertainment. And people who had come in there really didn't care to hear something that could alter their energy field. Or to take in information that they could maybe find useful they were there for fun right again that doesn't have to I felt bad for this woman because you could tell she was drained and I'm not a big fan when people treat me like that when they treat me like I'm the entertainment uh-uh <laughs> okay we don't play games here all right what we do is very valuable very helpful and it's it's a beautiful part of human connection and I'm always I always feel honored when people trust me with their readings because I realize how deep that goes. They're literally coming in letting me read their energy field. So anyway, I felt bad for this reader and I knew that a lot of people were not taking things seriously. They were keeping it very on the surface. So coming back to spiritual fatigue or spiritual burnout, in that case, it becomes boredom. It becomes boredom. And people who tend to go with the more uh, fourth dimension, this is, again, tricky. All love and respect to everybody out there, all the readers out there. I'm here with you, okay? So I'm not trying to be offensive. But some readings tap into a fourth dimensional energy. Not bad. That's not bad at all. Angelic energy is just different. It's just a different approach, right? So when somebody goes in and your intention is not to actually take anything meaningful away from the reading, your reader, maybe just from a survival standpoint, might just give you what you're looking for. And I remember when I first started as a reader, I was like, oh my gosh, people are doing that? That's, no. Now I'm in it. I see why they do that. Especially if people are like, am I going to win the lottery? You know, if they're not going to take it seriously, do you really want to open your energy field to that? You'll end up like this other reader who you could tell maybe thought this was a great chance to come in and do some good work. And she ended up just getting spent in the process. So that could be burnout for the reader, <laughs> for sure, but also burnout for the person who's listening. Now, social media has been a beautiful gauge of where people are spiritually or where their mindset is. You know, at one point, angel readings, for example were incredibly popular. They're incredibly popular. Who would who would go and get these types of readings? Uh, how do I do this gently? I don't think I can. Needy people, clingy people, professional victims, coddle me, feel sorry for me, hold me. I don't know. <laughs> that and that was one of the reasons why when I first came out. Um, it was sort of like a double-edged sword because I, I do the angelic work and I don't coddle. Uh, I'm not here being the fake and phony like, you know, oh, I'm soft-spoken and, you know, all this stuff and nothing ever gets to me. No, I, no. <laughs> I, 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 anyway, that's a whole other video. But um, when people were not getting that coddling anymore, they either dropped off completely or they started going towards people who just give me the quick information, cut to the chase, which can be awesome. The problem is, is most people don't know how to receive that. They don't know how to receive it. <laughs> right? I love giving this example. It was one of my first clients way back in the day. Um, and I'm just going to say it flat out. This person was a narcissist, okay? Full-on narcissist. 
don't need to be an expert. Duh. This that's what's happening. Okay. Like, no, you can't. Diagnose. You can if it's obvious, and you certainly can not from a professional standpoint. But if you've lived it and you notice it, you don't need to play dumb for other people's comfort levels. Okay, or for some societal thing that says you shouldn't do that. If you've lived it and you know it, you can stand back from it. But anyway, I had this person come in and um, always talking about how how many women want him. And oh, it was a lot. I will spare you. Anyway, we did a card reading. He had really good cards. I was trying. He was one of those clients who you couldn't really do channel messages with him because he wouldn't receive them. He wanted the cards. He wanted to see it. Okay, that's fine. Everyone's in a different place. It's all good. Very positive cards. I said to this person, if you stay in the energy that you're in, here are some things that could break open for you. Later on, this person comes back and was really abusive and said, my life fell apart and it's all your fault. Now, if any of you have followed me for any amount of time, please take a moment. (laughs) Feel free to take that in um, and smile, laugh, because you know how well that went for him. So (laughs) I very uh, strongly reminded him that, you know, this is the energy of that moment. Here are the messages. You are responsible for taking the messages in and you are responsible for either implementing or ignoring what was going on. And I asked, what what did you do after that reading? And he said, well, you said my future was assured. No, I didn't. No, I didn't because I don't say stuff like that. Don't come in and tell me who I am and how I do things, okay? I know how I do things, right? So I knew I didn't say that. He was just avoiding accountability. And if you're a reader, you are very familiar with that, I'm sure. So basically, he sat back, did nothing, his life fell apart, and then he just wanted to go blame someone. But the biggest problem I had was he was abusive, and we were going to shut that down right quick. And of course, he went away, thank God, Um, because I I don't need it. (laughs) I don't need it, and I hope he didn't go off to anybody else. But anyway, so, you know, when we have things like that going on, we can get fatigued as people who are practitioners, but we can also have people who, like I said, getting getting bored or they're not getting their expectations met. I always say expectations are a dangerous thing. You come in, you're going to be let down because if you don't hear what you want to hear, are you going to shut out what was actually said, right? Now you missed it. You missed your message. And now what are you going to do? gonna pout you're gonna play victim you're gonna you see what i'm getting at so that's another form of fatigue let's go to people who are kind of here in the middle they are like curious about this they're coming in they're like i tried it but i don't think i'm doing it right i hear this all the time my loves you're doing it just fine you you don't have to do it the way somebody else does and and i hear all the time where people are like i don't know how to meditate or whatever Um, There are plenty of meditation teachers out there. Be discerning. You know, if someone seems like they're just in it for the control, diminishing everybody, that's not the game. Okay? But you can always start with closing your eyes, bringing your attention to your heart space. Okay? You can call in the angels of God's purest love and light, of sources purest love and light, however you see that. Okay? And breathe. Deep breathing. You can do a count breathing okay there's different types of breathing around that and you're going to naturally calm your brain down you're going to calm your entire nervous system you can do that okay i think what people mean when they say i can't get into a deep meditation maybe they 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 have racing thoughts you know all these kinds of things that's fine all right eventually you'll learn to allow that to go so that you can be in a meditative state, all right? So take it easy on yourselves. But I think people are getting that kind of form of burnout where it's like, I'm not doing it right, I give up, (laughs) right? Or here's a big one, here's a big one. Going back to the type of readings that I typically do. I pull cards because humans like visuals. Humans, us humans, we like, you know, to see it right in front of our face, something physical, right? And I think it's always very helpful especially when we're doing a large reading because there are colors, images, words. Yeah, that could help pinpoint some slightly more specific messages for people who are watching. But again, it's not necessarily meant to be predictive. It's meant to let you know what energies are coming up. We'll see how it plays out. Here's how we need to gear up 
to be ready to handle that because the angels are watching over us so that we maintain and understand the power of our energy field and maintain it and even grow if it's appropriate for you in that moment, right? So that's really what the messages are meant to do. So if people come to my channel looking for a quick thrill reading, this isn't the place, right? And they'll say, oh, well, this is no good. They'll go off. <laughs> do you see what I'm getting at? They'll go off to where it is kind of the cheap thrill and you almost become codependent with that reader, feeling like you can't make another step in your life until you hear what they have to say about it. But that's not really what we do here, right? If you're really taking in the messages, you should walk away more empowered. And even if you don't have all the details of what's coming, when it does show up, you go, oh, I'm energetically prepared to handle this. It'll be all right. So if you have gotten to a place of this stuff just isn't interesting anymore, you probably weren't coming to it for the right reasons in the first place. And I'm making this video in part as an invitation to not just see spirituality is something to thrill you as something, you know, that's, oh, it's fascinating, then it loses its fascination. It is part of self-care. I've made a video before saying spiritual wellness matters. It absolutely matters. And if you're in a place where you feel like you're lost, you're spinning, I just don't know what to do next on my spiritual path, just take a break. And without too much pressure on yourself, maybe if you are going to meditate, you focus on clearing. You could do that with Archangel Michael. Don't worry so much about keeping up with other people because that's the other thing. People are on this like competitive track with one another. If anybody treats spirituality like a competition, that's dark energy. Because that's not what true spirituality is that's not what it is it's a beautiful process that should connect humans to one another not divide so take that part with you some of you might be sitting there going oh my gosh that yoga class I'm in everybody's very competitive or oh I have a spiritual teacher who is constantly acting like they're above it all and whatever, whatever, Th those, remember, there are dark energies that are trying to infiltrate to stop the process of whatever you want to call it, <laughs> expansiveness, uh, deeper understanding, some people call it ascension, you know, there are forces trying to stop that. The other way that can express would be through people making fun of it, diminishing it, diminishing people who believe in that weird stuff or the woo-woo thing, you know, acting like everybody is crazy who's, listen, spiritual, the spiritual community does attract a lot of people who are dealing with mental issues. That is true. They're looking, because it's supposed to be a community where everyone is accepted, people are trying to find themselves, they're trying to find peace. But that doesn't mean that if somebody is spiritually open, that they're automatically crazy as a matter of fact, um, it's a red, oh, giant red flag when someone says, oh, that stuff. Because I know they're going to get left behind, okay? Now, again, everybody can be where they want to be. But those types of people, when push comes to shove, can end up pulling on the energy of other people out of their sheer panic. I've seen it a million times where people are like, I don't believe in this stuff. This stuff's crazy. And then something's going down that maybe we said, you know, here's the energy around it. And then when it starts playing out, they realize, oh my gosh, that was a heads up. Tell me more. Right? But still, they're coming at it from panic. They're coming at it not from like a real respect of what's happening, of the process, but more of a what can I get out of this kind of process. So that is, that's just an example of one type of person, but that can apply to everybody who comes into spirituality. What can I gain from this? What can I get? How can I better myself? I have had people from every type of life you can imagine. From some of the wealthiest people, <laughs> that's a big point of conversation right now, from the wealthiest people to people who have nothing, from every kind of culture you can imagine. 
And the commonality is either I don't feel like I'm doing life right. I don't think I'm powerful enough. I, I need guidance, right? Or how can I get richer? How can I get that person to love me, right? So when somebody comes in, they're like, hey, what do the angels have to tell me? Or how can I just be the best person, <laughs> right? And it's fine to come with like specific issues because then if we can break that down, you can release it and open up to more information coming in. But part of the burnout comes from the approach and the expectation. So if you are hitting that wall, it's time to reevaluate. Why did I get into this? What did I think was gonna happen? Did I think if I opened up my spiritual self that I would never have to learn another lesson? I hear that all the time too. Or again, what can I get out of this? I had a client who, um, again, a long time ago, she came to me and said, I wanna know how I can make the most money possible. And I started, I was told right away to be careful with this person. And I got the information about why this person was so hung up on money. Mind you, this, this was back when I used to offer 15 minute readings. So this person got a 15 minute reading. And once they got it, she came back and again, was nasty, abusive. She threatened to sue me. Yes, she threatened to sue me because I didn't give her the secrets of how to make the most money in this world. And uh, she started sending me, it was bizarre, guys. It was so bizarre. She sent me photos of her. One was with her, with a dolphin. Um, like she's posing with a dolphin and going, see, this is, I have money. I can go, I don't have problems with money. I could go anywhere I want, which was not what I had said. But, you know, it was, you'll get that, <laughs> right? You'll get that. But again, that's another example of how can I, you know, how can I use these little tricks to get something? And none of that is the point of that spiritual growth. You have a spiritual self that needs nurturing. Those needs may shift and change. But that is why I do angelic work. Because the need for the, the angelic messaging, that never goes away. That's a constant. That's a constant. They are like the support systems to us without coddling us. So sit with this information, ask yourself, what, what have I started to avoid now? Was I sort of feasting on readings that were for entertainment, right? Like that were just kind of thrilling readings that would only pertain in the moment, sort of the equivalent of having a bunch of junk food, <laughs> right? Or can I open myself up to more meaningful, deeper connected things that are really, you know, information, let's say. Information that's really going to help me understand myself, understand my place in this world, you know, how I can help others, how I can interact with others, and provide the best energy output possible. Put that into the collective. What can I contribute in that way? There's a shift going on here. We just had uh, a 2323 energy portal. That's going to be breaking a lot of things open. I hope you are ready. Of course, if you want to get a session with me, you can visit my website, angelsouls444.com. You can always check the description box for all the other offerings. But as far as this topic goes, we will end it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.